Corinthians 61. Are you there? All right, for the reverence for the word of God, I'll ask if you will stand with us. We will read three verses here. I'll read the first and you'll read the second and the third. We'll read together. Beginning at verse one, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Together. To appoint to, to, to them that, that mourn in Zion, Zion to give to, to give them, them beauty, beauty for, ashes, for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that, that they, they might, might be called trees of righteousness, righteousness the, the planting of, of the Lord, that he might, might be glorified. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pray with me. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you giving thanks to you for all that you've done for the many mothers that are here. For the ones, Lord, that shall be mothers in the future by your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for this special day that was set aside by our nation, O oh God, in honor of mothers and directed by the founding fathers who were directed by your precious love for humanity. Thank you, Lord. Bless today, O oh God, and strengthen the mothers that are listening to me by way of broadcast. Let this word, Lord God, strengthen them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, all the praise and honor shall go to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and you may be seated. Praise the Lord in Isaiah. Isaiah was, the book of Isaiah has been designated as a mini Bible. And because of the way it's uh, laid out. And I believe Isaiah spoke more concerning the Messiah than any other book. Jesus quoted from this book and other books. And, but it describes a lot about Jesus. 53 talks about the, uh, the servant, uh, how he was wounded, the suffering servant, and what the healing that he will bring and all the others, just so many uh, chapters and verses talks about Jesus, the Messiah, the promised one. And 39 books in the Old Testament, first 39 deals with such, and the latter 27 uh, deals with the Lord in a very special way. Uh, New Testament uh, uh, prophecies and things that would take place so it's been known as a mini Bible. We are grateful to the Lord, but I want to talk briefly about joy. Joy. Someone say joy. joy. I believe that's what the Lord put on my heart. Joy for the mothers. This is what God wants to do and what he will do. And I'm excited about it. Look again with me here in this passage. Uh, beginning at one, it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And if you'll go to Matthew 4, you'll see it repeated in similar words. Or Luke, I'm sorry, Luke 4. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings or glad tidings to the meek, to the poor. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Someone say bind up. To proclaim liberty or freedom to the captive. Someone says freedom. freedom. And the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound. And he didn't stop there. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The year of the Lord's favor. And the day of vengeance of our God. To, to comfort all that mourn. Notice when Jesus read from the scroll in Isaiah uh, in the book of Luke, he left out this phrase and the day of vengeance of our God. That was futuristic and so it was not a day of vengeance 
of the Lord, but it was a day of favor from God. And then verse 3 says, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Trees of righteousness, planted of God. God plants trees and they draw from the soil of God's love and power and they grow up to be trees of righteousness, trees that will glorify God. But here, Isaiah foresaw the day uh, concerning the age of the Messiah, not only when Jesus would come here on earth, but the uh, day when, during the millennial reign of Christ, he saw that also. But here we can look forward to what God is saying. So just by way of introduction, the writer says, a message of instruction and hope for those oppressed by fear and doubt. It describes the ministry of Jesus as healer and messenger of freedom and comfort. It also depicts festive joy as part of the Messiah's reign. Festive joy as part of the Messiah's reign. It also depicts the basic ministry passed on to the church. The works that I do, Jesus said, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. I paid particular attention to verse 3. He says, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty, for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, what caught my attention, I was a little inquisitive. I wanted to know more about the garment of praise. The garment of praise. And as I thought upon the word garment, uh, one writer said it teaches us to wrap or cover ourselves. It means to leave no opening through which hostile elements can penetrate. A garment is something that you wear. Am I right? And I thought about the garment. He calls it a garment of praise. And so I, as the more I thought about it, a garment is something that we put on and we can also take it off. Am I right? And as I thought about a garment, how we lie down, we take off garments, we get up in the morning, we put on garments. This is our choosing. What would happen if we did not put on a garment after we got up? We wouldn't think of such, right? Right? because we find it necessary to put on clothing and to clothe ourselves. And therefore, it is good that we put on the garment of praise. It can be an act of our will. I can choose to put it on. A am I right? Everybody may not praise God, but it's given to us as a garment. And we can choose to wear it. Praise the Lord. Then I thought about the garment. Garments, some garments are seasonal. I, I don't wear a heavy coat in the summer or the spring. Do you? 
because it's not the garment that you wear in the winter or in summer or spring. The same thing with winter or the fall when it gets cooler, I put on more garments. We all do it to adjust to the season. Somebody say adjusting to the season. All right. So I thought about it. The more I thought about this, uh, uh, what he said, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I can wear that garment instead of the garment of heaviness. And as I thought about that, my thoughts went to 1 Peter. Go with me there briefly, if you will. Chapter 1. Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Isn't that right? Look at verse six. Wherein you greatly Rejoice, though now, for what? For a season, if need be. Ye are in what? Heaven is through manifold temptations. So, he said in Isaiah, to give to them that mourn in Zion the oil of joy uh, for the spirit of heaven, or for the, for the spirit of heaven as and uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so uh, 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 it can also be a seasonal garment in the sense or a garment especially needed in the season of trials. Are you with me? It is important here, he mentions heaviness and he implies uh, a season. Let me go back to uh, Isaiah again. He says to appoint to them that mourn in Zion to give to them beautiful ashes, the oil of garment, the oil of joy. I'm sorry for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And we find sometimes people get heavy when they are going through things that's not pleasant and but that's the season or the time that we must uh, wear our garments of praise that's been given to us right uh, someone says concerning this garment uh, it repels and replaces the spirit of heaviness heaviness here in the Greek means uh, distress to be dis to distress, uh, to be sad, or to be sorrowful. Peter said we may find ourselves being sorrowful or sad for a season or heavy, heavy for a certain season, for a certain while, because of the things that we suffer, right? But during this season, spiritually speaking, we then must put on the garment that's been given to all of us through Christ. And that garment, we wear that garment in this season of trials, oppressions, so that it will repel the spirit of heaviness. Isn't that right? Let's pause and have a praise break. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then uh, he talks about the oil of joy. We're talking about joy today. Mothers of joy or joy for the mothers. Mothers, you've gone through a lot of things over the years. And this is the message that God has given me. It wasn't something that I sat down and tried to figure out how, what I can say to encourage the mothers. But it was as I was in the presence of God seeking him for a word for his mothers. And God uh, said, joy. I want to give them joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God says, I want to give them joy. And that means he is well aware of how we feel on a daily basis. Isn't that right? He is well aware of what we are challenged with week in and week out. Week out. He is aware of it. And therefore, he comes and says, I want to give the mothers joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, joy defined here is cheerfulness. Cheerfulness. And it comes from a root word meaning to be bright. To be bright. Can you say that with me? To be bright. Now, think about it. Now, God, this is what he's saying. I want to give the mother's joy. And, you know, if it's good for the mother, it's good for us. Isn't that right? So, uh, he's basically he's saying, I want to make them cheerful in heart. And it means gladness. It implies richness. Anointing. And fruitfulness. I want to make them fruitful. I want to, uh, I want to anoint them afresh. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and the word oil, he said with the oil of joy. The word oil in the Hebrew means to grease. To grease. My gosh. But it also means to shine. You know, when you, I used to see my mother put Johnson baby oil on the baby. That little baby brother and sister was shining, boy, brother, when she put that oil on him. Hallelujah. <laughs> so look what he's saying here. I want to make them shine. I want to make them cheerful in the heart, glad in their soul, anointing them afresh and fruitful in whatever they do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then he says, the oil of joy for mourning. Notice what he's saying. Now, to mourn means to feel or show deep sorrow or regret for someone or their death. To feel, in a, in a verb sense, it means to feel regret or sadness about the loss or disappointing men of something. And then it means also feeling or expressing sadness, regret, or grief or unhappiness. Again, now we're uh, paying attention to the fact that if God says, I want to give the mother's joy, then God is implying there's, there's not joy or not sufficient joy. Isn't that right? But if God wants to give us joy, how many is ready to receive joy from the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joy is especially important for the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. So it replaced sadness and sorrows and feelings of regret and feelings of disappointment and unhappiness. This, this joy that God gives, uh, uh, 
uh, overrides it and begins to, hallelujah, makes our heart cheerful and glad. It, it makes us shine. I, I remember going into a, a department store and I'm walking to mind in my own business and a man stopped me and says, uh, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, sir. So are you a preacher? I said, yes, I am. So why, why did you say? He said, I, I, I could see. I can just see there's something there about you. I just, and so God does something to you and I when he anoints us. There's something bigger than you on you. Hallelujah. And it comes from the Lord. It, it makes you shine. You, and it's and, and, and sad to say that if a person is not saved, they're dull. They don't have that shine. They don't have that glow. And you've heard people say to you at times, uh, there's something about that person. I can't put my finger on them, but there's something different about them. It is a Christ in you. It's, you've, been oil, you've been anointed by the oil of God's gladness. And that oil makes you different. It makes you shine. It makes people see in you something that they don't see in just anybody. Because it comes from Jesus Christ Hallelujah. And so I thought about that as I thought about that. Uh, he brought me to the book of Isaiah 60. And, 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 and he said, this is kind of a part of what I want you to see. And Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You see, when God shines upon you and when your morning is here, when your time has come, when God brings you out of darkness and brings you into this marvelous light, something is happening to you. Something will cause you to shine. And then you got to get up and do something. Isn't that right? Because the light of God is on you now. And so I heard the writer says, arise and shine for your light has come. Your morning, your day has come. Your appointed time has come. And the glory of the Lord is upon you. Can we give God some thanks and praise? The glory of the Lord is on us. The glory of the Lord is on us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mothers, God says arise and shine. I want to give you the joy. I'm going to anoint you afresh. I'm going to grease you with my anointing. Hallelujah. And your faces is going to shine again. Uh, the sorrow in the morning is going to flee away. And you're going to see hope beyond what you're going through. Hallelujah. Because of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. As we look about and think about the word joy. Hallelujah. It's cheerfulness. Now, now, I'm, 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 and I know sometimes we can be unhappy, but one, one man was sharing. He said joy is, is different from just happiness. Happiness can be more of a mood or an emotion. Isn't that right? If someone's going to give you a couple of thousand dollars when you walk out, you can be that's as happy as you can be, right? But if, you, if they give you a check and you're so excited and when you go to the bank the next day and try to cash it, they say, ain't no money in the bank. <laughs> then all that happiness leaves, isn't that right? So happiness is just an emotion. It can come and go, right? But we ain't talking about some emotion that comes and goes. We're talking about something greater than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're talking about something that's given by God. It can't be easily taken away. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It takes God to give you something that it just can't take it away. God, God, because God's love is not fickle. You know, our love can be very fickle, you know. Yeah, I love you if you love me, you know. But that, that, that's not the way God works. His love is different. Unconditional. He doesn't put conditions behind his love. Yeah. Isn't that good? Because yeah. sometimes we miss it. Isn't that right? Yeah. But he loves us still. Yeah. Because he is love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And as uh, I, I, I thought about this love, I, I, uh, this joy that God is talking about, just trying to grab a hold of it. I, I, I want this, this thing more and more. But what I have experienced thus far I remember times, and this has been happening for weeks and weeks and months now, 
And uh, I used to hear them talk about the joy. You know, it's not a, it's not a, a, a little mood that I'm in. It's not an emotion here. And so I was, years ago, I used to say, boy, I, I want to know what that's about. Since it's produced by the Spirit. But I must say now, by the grace of God, that joy is there. I remember getting up just over and over again, I, and, and, and I, I, told, I told my wife just the other day, I said, you know, this is so incredible. There's a joy in my soul that is unspeakable. This joy, you, you can't even describe it, but it makes you bless the Lord. It makes you praise and magnify God, and, and it looks like you want to, you, you be trying to, to describe it, but you can't describe it. It's, it's coming from God, and this joy is wonderful. And, 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 and Peter calls it unspeakable joy. It's there in your soul, and you know it's there. It's coming out, but you cannot describe it. It's good joy. Oh, you know that your heart is exceedingly cheerful. Glory to God. God, mothers, God want to do this for you today. You've been through a lot. God says he want to give the church joy. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then, and, and, uh, I'm going to kind of wrap this up here, but um, I want to say these things about joy. One is, is predicated upon faith. It's not, 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 not based on something we see or feel. All right? Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1 let's see let me go there right fast All right, verse 7 said that the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perish though it be tried with fire might be found to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ whom having not seen, somebody say not seen, you love and whom though now you see him not, don't see him now, yet believe it. You do what? Rejoice with joy unspeakable. See, it's not predicated on how we feel. I might not feel like like, like I should be happy or cheerful. But faith is in my soul. Faith is in my heart. That means I still can receive that joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because it comes from and by the Spirit. So it's predicated upon faith. Not based on the sight of feeling. We walk, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. That means if I stop and I begin to praise God right now, it's in order. Can we give him some praise? Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for his goodness. Unspeakable joy. My God, you can't describe this joy, but all you know is deep down inside, there's a joy that, that won't wait. Oh, it's exciting. I get up in the morning, and after I finish my time of prayer, get ready to go out, and as soon as I get in that car, and, 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 and I started, I, you know, I, I let out these, you, if you'd heard me sometime, you'd say, what, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with pastor here, boy? But there's such an excitement in my soul. And I know where it's coming from. It's the joy of the Lord that he promised. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. It's yours. Hallelujah for the asking saints. That's what Peter said. Hallelujah. He says, uh, believing, you rejoice with unspeakable joy. Second thing about this joy Isaiah 12, 6 says, for with joy, we draw water out of the wells of salvation. Joy is a divine deposit. And we can extract from the wells of salvation. We can extract from the multiple wells of deliverance or healing or whatever we need from God because all that we need is in him. 
So he says, with joy we draw waters out of the wells of salvation. How we draw from the well seemed to be important to Isaiah. Hallelujah. When I was in the country and uh, on the farm living, we had a well outside. This well was deep and they had to cover it because the children, not knowing they could fall in a well, and surely you'd get drowned unless a miracle happened because the well was very deep. And we had a, a, a little pail that was tied to a chain. And when we got ready to draw water out of this deep well, then we had to call, roll the chain and pull it, and it would roll down this little bucket, and the bucket would fall down in the water that was so deep, and then it would just uh, uh, get the water... Uh, uh, and be, get full, and then after it got full, we would draw it out. We would draw the water from that deep well. Isaiah said, with joy, we draw waters out of the wells of salvation. I, one way to look at it is like this. Joy can be like a big pail that needs to go deep into the, uh, 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 the salvation of God. Hallelujah, there's some things will not come except we find ourselves rejoicing in God. Isn't that right? Hallelujah, but with joy we draw waters out of the wells of salvation. Can we pause and give God a praise break? Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we honor you. We thank you, Lord God, we want to draw from the wells of salvation with an attitude of joy. The third thing that I saw here is found in Romans 14 and 17. He talks about uh, one of the joy is one of the threefold aspects of the kingdom rule. Joy is one of the threefold aspects of the kingdom rule. Well, he said the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. My God, thank you, Lord. One of the three aspects is is the joy in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives joy. The Holy Ghost brings the joy. Yeah. It is a fruit of the Spirit. Isn't that right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So he said the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. And so, but, but joy, so it's produced. It comes from the Spirit. And we've been born of the Spirit. Spirit. It is one aspect of the kingdom rule. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, is the kingdom ruling in you? Do you have the joy? Hallelujah. My God, if the kingdom is ruling in you and I in his full bloom as he want to, then somewhere I'm going to be happy. Hallelujah. In spite of the way things look for me. Isn't that right? Hallelujah for the joy of the Lord. Is our strength. Hallelujah. I want the kingdom to rule not only in righteousness, but in peace, but I want it to rule in the joy. Hallelujah. Joy. Unspeakable. Joy. Joy is contagious. When people see people that are joyful, it makes them, it, it sends off something beautiful. It is something that, that makes them want to kind of be around you. You know, it makes them want to draw close and find out about you a little more. Or what is it that makes you joy? I, my, there was a gentleman, a friend of mine, he was telling uh, about a young lady that came to him. He worked for the city and the lady came to him <clears throat> And she noticed him. She just kept noticing him. She was unsaved. But she kept noticing him for, well, for weeks and months. He was just a happy person, just excited. And so one day she got around there and kind of caught him by himself and said, you know, I, 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 I wanna, I've been wanting to ask you a question. And he said, yes, ma'am. He said, why are you so happy? What in the world is there to be so happy about? And knowing him, he began to smile inside. And he said, do you really want to know? <laughs> so she said, yeah. Then he paused again. He says, do you really want to know? So she began to wonder if she really wanted to know. You know? <laughs> I think she felt it coming on that, oh, my, I believe this man must be a Christian or something. But anyway, she, she, she slowly said, yeah. To make a long story short, he shared Jesus Christ with her 
and the lady got saved. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joy makes people want to know in this time where people are suffering so much sadness and sorrow, God wants to give us joy. He wants us to shine. Hallelujah. So it's one of the aspects of kingdom rule. The kingdom wants to rule in your life. I want you to look at someone and says, neighbor, the kingdom must rule in this aspect of your life. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now this joy here is not to a select few. It is available to all. Yes. Luke 2, 10 says, the angels, when they were proclaiming uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, he says, peace on earth and goodwill to, or, to, to all men. And uh, uh, let, me, let me read it. Uh, make sure I got it right here. Luke 2. He says, and the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. It's not to a select few. My God, I'm grateful, aren't you? Hallelujah. My brother can have it. My sister can have it. My daughters, my sons, if they don't have it, they can have it. Everybody can have it. Your neighbor can have it. Your friend can have it. Your coworker can have it. It's available to all those that would receive. So it's available to all. And then I find according to John 16, this joy can't be taken from you by man. Now sometimes we can allow mankind to, to take our joy, but it's not to be taken if we understand it, right? It didn't, it didn't come from man, right? I remember when Jesus told him, he said, uh, uh, you, you're going to see me again. Because I told you I had to go, sorrow has filled your heart. But he said, you're going to see me again. And your joy, this joy, no man's going to take it from you. So it's a joy that man can't take away from you. Aren't you glad? Because man don't give it, man can't take it away. You can be happy, hallelujah, 24-7, because that which comes from God is from God. I want to pause and give the Lord another praise break. Lord, I thank you for such joy. I thank you for such joy. Coming from the almighty God, I praise you for that joy. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the joy. Hallelujah. Joy can't be taken away by human. My God, that's good. Thank you, Lord. If someone makes you happy, you make them mad, they can make you sad. Isn't that right? But joy that comes from Jesus can't be taken away. And then finally, I, I'm reminded, uh, not finally, the last, next to the last thing I want to say, that, uh, in the book of Nehemiah, he says, it's just strength. want to be strong you want to rejoice isn't that right if the Lord if joy is our strength it is good to rejoice in the face of our enemies because it provides the strength that comes from the Lord and everywhere when God had his people having to go out against their enemies he encouraged them to rejoice because the joy of the Lord is our strength Nehemiah talks about it in Nehemiah 8.10 you can uh, uh, search it on your own time, but it's just strength. Remember this, when you are joyful, you're strong. Because it's just strength. God is a joyful God. God is a wonderful God. Then finally, I'm reminded of a songwriter. This songwriter says, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I, I, I dare you to begin to think about what God has already done for you. You see, if you, if, you, if, you, if you don't look ahead or if you don't look at what God is doing now, if you happen to be looking back 
too much. Then you're not going to be able to see what God has done and what he's going to do already. Isn't that right? I, I find when, when I'm looking, look at what happens when I'm looking back. I'm looking back, but I can't see what's happening now. And, and, and sometimes I could, I could stumble. Isn't that right? Because I'm looking back and I'm not looking forward. So I find that Paul said, um, I forget all the stuff that was behind them and I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. So I got to keep looking ahead. I got to look forward. No matter how good that was back there, no matter how bad it was back there, he said, I'm looking forward. I press forward to the for the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus and God wants us to shift our eyes from what has been he wants us to shift our eyes and begin to lay aside the weight the things that stand and holds us back like chains he said I want you to look ahead I've got greater things for you now I, I want to pull you out of Lodabar I want to pull you up now out of that place and bring you into a wealthy place it is just season it's your time it is your point in time hallelujah but the writer says I get joy when I think about what he's done for me what about you today what are your thoughts what do you think about 24 7 I heard the Lord says he will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him if you'll just focus on the Lord Jesus it's hard to look on him it's hard to think about how good he is and not be happy the story is told about a man that says God I think I'm going to backslide there's too many things going on I think I'm going to back, backslide. See, well, but before I go, I want to just give you thanks for what you've already done. So he thought about it. Thank you for the time that I didn't have food on my table. And I remember you supplied that need. Thank you for it. Thank you for the time that... Uh, my son was in trouble and you brought him to yeah yeah you, you, you brought him through so he goes on down to list several things and all of a sudden he said you know what I don't think I'm going back so I don't know. when I think on the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me my soul cry out hallelujah I thank God for saving me hallelujah to the Lamb Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. I, I, I'm reminded of COVID-19 that wiped out a lot of people. But, I, but, but saints of God, I'm still here. Hallelujah. I'm still here. I, I, I can't tell you that it was my goodness that kept me here. But the Lord kept me, saints. I, I, I'm thinking about how my body was racked with pain one day. And God stopped by and he healed my body. The physician couldn't do it. I, I had to stop and give him thanks. I, I, I'm thinking about, hallelujah, how God keep my family. I, I, it, it's something else. When I look about, when I see the Lord's goodness. And when I think about how good he's been when I think about the goodness of Jesus it makes my soul say thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord glory to God glory to God hallelujah Jesus I remember the time when I was so afraid I was so afraid I, I couldn't function I was so afraid Went home, fell on my, took off from work. Went home, fell on my face, cried out to God. And I remember God visiting me and he took every ounce of fear from my soul. I got up and I was able to face today. Ah, because of Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus is a very present help in a time of need. Woo, glory to God. Um, when I get up in the morning, um, I lift my hands to Jesus Christ. Um, I begin to say, God, I thank you. I got 
activities of my limbs. My mind is okay. I can walk, Lord God. I can walk and I can talk. I can articulate. There's something good about what you've done. I, I, when I laid down last night, it was not something that I did to cause you to wake me up this morning. It was all your goodness, Lord. It was all your mercy, Lord. I want to thank you for it, God. You've been good to me, Lord. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. You're a great Savior. And right now, I believe God says, I want to do more than that. I want to give you some joy in your soul. I've seen your sorrows. I've seen your pain. I've seen your regrets. I've seen your unhappiness. But I'm going to do something for you that blows your mind. I'm going to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Somebody let's glorify the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Give him the glory that's due his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says rejoice, O ye righteous, for the Lord is at hand. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's been good. He's been good. When I think about when I think about Mother's Day, I remember my mother was sick. And she was in Chapel Hill. So sick they thought she was gonna die. And I remember I couldn't go home and I said, Dad, I can't come home. I didn't want to tell him I didn't have the money. But I couldn't go home and Dad rebuked me. He said, son, there's some time you need to drop what you're doing and come. He said, he was implying you don't know whether or not your mother's going to make it through this. And I went back to Doug, to the Lord. I said, God, you know. You know I want to go. And then I began to pray. God said, call your mother up. I called my mother up and he said, pray with her on the phone. Prayed with my mother over the phone. God instantly healed her. She got up the next day. They say, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Let her out of the hospital. I want you to know, hallelujah. Glory to God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. All he's done for me. It makes my soul want to cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Finally, I remember my daughter was having seizures so many for years and sometimes we couldn't even sleep at night. Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night and she's in a seizure. Just, it was just awesome, awful. And so we'd sleep almost with one eye open. We couldn't sleep peacefully for a long time. God spoke to my sister. He began to tell her something about my daughter, Jessica. He said, when they come again, I want you to pray for her. And she told me what the Lord said, and we took her down there on one occasion. She just prayed, nothing big. Just prayed in obedience to God. So we didn't see anything. We didn't, didn't feel any goosebumps. We didn't. So we went on back. Ten years later, Hear me. Ten years later, we had testimony service and Jessica was standing up and testifying. And she began to tell how she had had seizures and they were bad at times, real bad. And she said, it's been 10 years and I haven't had a seizure since my aunt prayed for me. I said, God, I thank you. What I think of the goodness of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. 
for saving me. I, I feel the Lord wants me to tell another. I remember my oldest daughter, Nidra. She was headed on 64. That little small, I forgot what, what the car was. Little Honda, little small Honda. She was traveling. I, I, I won't say she was beating. I don't know what she was doing, but but all of a sudden she said she lost control of the car. And she don't remember. All she saw was a bright light. And that's all she remembers. When she came to herself, she had survived an accident. Car, I don't know if it, it fell and ran it, it hit the side, hit the medium and just threw her on the other side and but she was, I think she was out for a while. But need to wave your hand today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that light was none other than Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, it make my soul cry out. Thank you for saving me, Lord. I want you to join me, if you will, stand and let's give God some glory for his goodness. Lord, we thank you right now. Give your name the praise. Lord, some may not be able to know how good you've been to them, but you've been good. You put food on the table, Lord. Give us the strength to work. It's your doing, Lord. It's not our doing. We want to give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you give him his praise? Hallelujah. Mothers, mothers, give him praise. God says it's joy. I'm just going to ask quickly, and we're going to do this, and I'm going to let you go home. If you feel like, oh God, I need some joy today, show sure up, just come. And we're just going to, from where we are, pray. And we're going to release you to go. Anybody?